in a moment. So we'll start in about five minutes. And while you're here, um, I hope you all have visited the homepage of nachi.org, N-A-C-H-I dot O-R-G. Uh, if you're a member, you probably already have. If you're a non-member on the homepage of nachi.org, you can download um, an ebook written by my brother, uh, Nick, founder of InterNACHI, um, and actually have the print version on my bookshelf here. So it's, it's a nice big book. Uh, it's thick. It's got a ton of information in it. And the title is How to Run a Successful Home Inspection Business, um, written by the founder of InterNACHI. And the, the download there, the download button, the red one, you can click. You can get it for free as an electronic ebook. So I would do that as well. And if you're just joining us, we'll be starting in about four minutes or so. Um, and if you are a member, or, or actually a non-member too, you'd be interested in this. Um, it's at, there's another page I wanna take you to. It's at nachi.org, hope you can see that, forward slash everything, nachi.org, N-A-C-H-I dot O-R-G, forward slash everything. And you go there, and the title of it is Become a Home Inspector, but um, if you're already a home inspector, don't let that fool you. It's actually a 15-step, step-by-step checklist on how to run a successful home inspection business based upon that book. I showed you, and a few more things. So if you're a non-member, um, the first step is to join InterNACHI. Why would you join InterNACHI? Well, there are many reasons. The main one is, once you become a member of InterNACHI, you have free, unlimited access to all of our training and some of the membership benefits, not all. As soon as you become certified, then you have, it's like a, the, the door to the world has opened for you. Becoming a certified home inspector through InterNACHI, now everything is available to you, including our marketing team, which sits down with you um, online and develops your brand and your marketing strategies and your business practices. And we'll be talking about one important business practice, um, tax deductions for your business today with Sandy. Um, so step one, join InterNACHI, have access to things. Step two, get certified. And we have over 30 certifications to choose from. And all of those training courses and certifications and logo use are free online for members. Step three is getting access to our marketing department. We have a large staff of young illustrators and marketing design professionals and graphics people. And all they do all day long is sit down and design logos, business logos for our members. And then they take that logo and they make a brand. They help you make a, a brand and they develop marketing pieces like your business card, your flyer, your brochure, and also help you with your website as well. So that everything that you do to in your marketing or promotional materials have the same message, have the same feeling, the same look. And you can't get that anywhere else because this is what we do all day long. Don't try to design your business card at home. Don't pull logos off of the internet. Don't ask your nephew to design something for you. Have it professionally designed by someone from InterNACHI. And that design, all those design services, the branding and the marketing services are free for our members. So we'll start um, the webinar with Sandy Bodkin in just a couple minutes. And step four, this is very important. I have a 15 step checklist on how to run a successful business. Step four is a business course. A lot of inspectors fail within the first year of creating their business because they think they, they're really good at doing home inspections technically, but they forget the other aspects, which is the business side. 
you have to think of yourself actually as a business owner who just happens to do home inspections, right? So we have an online free business course and it's big and it's thorough and it forces you actually to do, um, to write a business plan. That's one of the assignments. And you have to think things out, especially in pricing. How do you price your service fees in your market area? It has nothing to do with feelings or what your competitors are doing. It has everything to do with math. And we're going to be talking a lot about math and numbers today with Sandy Botkin. Um, and also, we'll be talking about TaxBot. Um, Sandy, let's see. I can give controls over. So uh, a short introduction to Sandy. Um, Sandy is a certified public accountant. Um, he's a legal specialist. He was a legal specialist in the office of chief counsel for the IRS. And as an attorney, um, Sandy has trained Sandy trained the new attorneys coming into the office at the IRS corporate tax division. Um, Sandy has authored many technical articles. He's lectured all over the world. And he was an adjunct professor um, of accounting and law. And Sandy is the author of two best-selling books. One of them is Lower Your Taxes Big Time and Real Estate Tax Secrets of the Rich. You can get that. Um, online and off of Amazon. And today, Sandy will be talking about how us home inspectors can um, can use a, a device called TaxBot to help us with our business practices and save a ton of cash by being vigilant with our tax deductions. Um, so, Sandy, um, I'm going to make you presenter if I can so Sandy can you hear me I can hear you I don't know if you can do that once you started recording oh yeah I can't give you uh, the screen control after I start recording you can, tr you can try I don't have it There you go. Okay, let me just click on slides. Well, hello everyone. I just want to tell you how honored I am to be presenting in conjunction with Internashi. And I'm also very honored to be speaking to you, self-employed individuals. I mean, heck, my parents were self-employed. I'm self-employed. So I've always respected anybody uh, who's willing to take maybe a little more risk in order to make a lot more money. Now, a couple things before I begin. This is a very content-rich program. There's a lot of material here. So you may want to get a pen, you may want to get some paper, because I'm really going to move. But the good news is this is being recorded, so you will get a copy of the recording. So I do want to mention that. And by the way, the name of the course, just to remind you, is how to pay less in taxes and not worry about an IRS audit. So think about that. You can increase your deductions and reduce your chance of an audit. Now that's feeling. All right, first of all, let me give a little background. I've been told that this picture is a lot better looking than I am, and it probably is. Uh, I am a CPA, I am a tax attorney, and I'm a former trainer of IRS attorneys nationwide. So if you think of an IRS agent as a rat, I guess that makes me the head rodent. I have been lecturing with my company called the Tax Reduction Institute for uh, probably over 30 years. I'm teaching self-employed people how to reduce their taxes. I'm a featured tax coach with Tony Robbins when he did his wealth seminars. I'm a best-selling author, as was mentioned, uh, by, by two books, actually. One is Lower Your Taxes Big Time, which I recommend to all of you. And my other book is called Achieve Financial Freedom Big Time. And both books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and you know, places like that. And I've been a guest tax expert on Fox, CNN, CBS and CNBC and many other places. And I'm not saying this to impress you. I just want you to know that I know what I'm talking about because I am going to be talking about some very startling and I think surprising things. 
and that's why I wanted to give you my background. First of all, let me give you our agenda. Uh, we're going to spend about five to eight minutes on why tax planning is critical, why you apt to why everybody, regardless of income, even if you're brand new, needs to know about this. Then we're going to spend about 40 minutes on the meat and potatoes of the tax education, where our content comes in, and you'll, you'll show you how to reduce your taxes and talk about documentation. Then we'll give you a short demo of a product that we've partnered with Internashi with on TaxBot. I think you'll find that to be very, very useful. Uh, we'll then open it up for live questions and answers. And I don't know if uh, Benjamin or my partner uh, David will be taking the questions, but we'll be taking your questions for the remainder of the time, so make sure you put them in chat, give them to you. And we're going to give you access to 10 free money-saving reports as part of the program. Now, here's an interesting fact. You know, I talked. I said I was going to say about some surprising things. You're going to spend more on taxes. A lot of people don't realize this. Then you'll spend on your home, your food, your, your clothing, and your transportation combined. It is the number one expense you will incur in this country, back in North America. Now, how much do you pay in taxes? See, most people are very surprised at this. I gave a seminar, one of these big mega events with Donald Trump and General Schwarzkopf and Tony Robbins. Some of you may have seen me there. And I had a gentleman come up to me and said, Mr. Botkin, I loved your program. There's only one problem. I don't pay taxes. I get a refund every year. He didn't realize he was getting back his own money, by the way. So I ran the numbers. Somebody makes $50,000 a year in an average performing tax state. Not nothing, you know, not an expensive state, but I picked Arizona. Again, of net taxable income pays roughly $12,917 in taxes. Now, normally withholding or estimated tax is more than that. It's more than that for two reasons. One, the government wants to make sure they get your money. But number two, uh, but when you get back a refund, don't you feel better? So even though this person's getting back $1,568, they're not getting it all back. Does everybody see this? They're still leaving $12,917 with the government. And I'm talking about federal, state, and Social Security and Medicare taxes. What that translates to is 25.8% of their net taxable income is being paid to the government. We're not talking about Donald Trump here. We're talking about a hardworking single individual netting out uh, 50000 a year of net taxable income. Somebody who nets out $100,000 a year pays in 32.4% of their net taxable income. And somebody who makes 250000 a year pays in roughly 37.7% of what they make in their net taxable income. So you're paying a lot in taxes. You may not realize it, but you are. Now here's another interesting slide, an interesting myth. This slide, I think, was developed by Donald Trump, actually. And he asked himself an interesting question. One thing I found different between the multimillionaires and everybody else is the questions that they asked themselves. And the question that he asked himself was, if I start off with $1 of equity, just $1, and my equity doubles every year, so I don't pay taxes on it, I'm just getting a doubling in my equity. How long would that dollar take to be worth a million dollars? So, for example, a dollar invested at doubles at the end of one year is now worth $2. $2 doubled at the end of two years, assuming you don't pay taxes, is worth $4, and so on. Well, if you run the numbers at the end of 20 years, it's worth $1,048,576. So it takes 20 years for that dollar to double. Now watch this. Let's assume you start off with the same dollar we did in the previous example. Let's assume you have the same 20 years. Let's assume your money doubles every single year except that you pay tax of 35% on the appreciation. Now, when you consider federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare, 35% is not that high. So a dollar doubled is not $2. It's really $1.65. $1.65 doubled is not $3.30. It's really $2.72. Well, if you run the numbers for 20 years, you'll be shocked. You know what the difference is? You won't believe me. $22,370 and some change versus the million dollars. Now, why is that? Do you know? The answer is compounding. You're losing the interest on all the money you're giving the government. Albert Einstein is attributed with saying compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. It can work for you by getting your taxes down to the legal minimum, or it can work against you by overpaying your taxes. I think Albert Einstein was a pretty smart cookie. You ought to take his advice. And that's true for everyone, no matter what business you're in, when you started your business or whatever. Now, there's another shocking statistic. There was a study done by, I believe, Harvard. I'm not sure which university. They wanted to know what percentage of the population could retire with the same standard of living at age 66 that they had before retirement. Know the answer? 
The answer was shocking, and that was 4%, which means 96% of everybody in this country at age 66 has to either continue working, live on some form of charity, or reduce their standard of living. But here's my point. If taxes are the number one expense in North America, and we can get those down legally, morally, and ethically, you think we can put you in that top 4%? Absolutely. And that's the important point of this program. You know, I'm going to say something that's going to sound kind of funny, but the government is the biggest bookie in North America. And the reason is the government wants you to be in business, and they pass some really good tax laws for business. In fact, we have actually two sets of tax laws. And when I say that, many people think, oh, sure, one for rich and one for poor. You listen to some of these political debates, you think that. It's not true. There's one to make you poor, and there's one to make you rich. The one to make you poor is the one designed for the working stiff, for the employee. Because if you are an employee, you are taxed on dollar one. You don't get that many deductions. If you do get a deduction, it has to exceed a threshold. I mean, you really don't come out ahead as an employee. But if you're self-employed, that's the one to make you rich. Because not only can you deduct everything that an employee can deduct, but you're taxed on your net income. You, you, government doesn't get one dime to drink until you pay, you get all your expenses deducted. Uh, in addition to that, so you're taxed on net. Number two, you get a tremendous amount of deductions you can, that employees don't get. You can write a part of your house, your spouse, the equivalent of your kid's education and weddings. I'm not exaggerating when I say that, by the way. You can set up a pension plan that I promise makes any government plan look small by comparison. The tax benefits are enormous. And you might wonder, well, why does the government pass these good tax laws? They are good tax laws because these things create deductions that you never have to pay back. And a deduction is an indirect form of cash. Why does the government do that for a small business? The answer is very simple. Jobs. Over 70% of the job growth is from small business. It's not from IBM or, Apple or Microsoft. It's small business. I mean, think about it for a moment. Uh, Apple Computer, when it started, didn't start with 50,000 employees. It started out of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak's garage. You can look it up if you don't believe me. Uh, Amazon, the big internet giant, started out of Jeff Bezos' garage. So the government passes good tax laws for you to get, uh, for, you, for you to generate your business and subsidize your business. And here's a good example of, of the difference. Mary is an example of an employee. And by the way, she can also be a self-employed person. Because if she doesn't know the rules, she's in the same boat as an employee. So knowledge of the rules is very important. And we have a couple of expenses for Mary. She has cell phone expenses. Well, that's normally not deductible as an employee. She pays mortgage interest. Well, all right, that's deductible, but only as a non-business deduction. If she pays rent, that's not deductible at all. Car expense, gas, repairs, insurance, not deductible as an employee unless you exceed a high threshold. Restaurants, Mary likes to eat out a lot, normally not deductible as an employee. Mary likes to entertain a lot. She likes to go to movies, golf, uh, hockey games, not deductible. She has medical expenses. They normally have to exceed 10% of your adjusted gross earnings to get one dime of deduction. And any other medical expenses have to exceed, any other expenses have to exceed a threshold. However, if you are self-employed, and that's true whether it's full-time or part-time, now portions of these same expenses that you're already spending which may be non-deductible, now can become deductible. Same money. We call this redirected spending. That's what it's called, because you're taking advantage of the good tax laws. In fact, I have found in my 30 years of lecturing that small business owners overpay their taxes to the tune of billions. That's with a B. And even worse, over 95% of the people I lecture to don't think they overpay. I'll bet you don't think you overpay. And there are three reasons why so many people overpay and don't know it. One reason is lack of knowledge. You don't know what you don't know. I mean, that's just the way it is. The second reason, which is, is I think is inexcusable, but it's huge, is procrastination. You know, a lot of times you know, we're so busy in our lives and busy in our business, we don't have the time, to, we don't think we have the time to do the things that we need to do. So what happens is we procrastinate. And what happens? We forget those deductions and we don't take them. It's a huge, huge killer of deductions. When I do seminars, I ask people, how many procrastinators we have here? And I get about half the people raising their hands. And I look at them and I, and I go, well, well, what about the rest of you? Are, are you going to quick write this down tomorrow? So yeah, it's just a huge killer. And the third reason people lose deductions is fear of the IRS. It's, I can't tell you how many people I meet who take less than deductions because they think that will reduce their chance of audit. And here's the shocking thing. Reducing your deductions do not reduce your chance of an audit. 
So all those people that thought that that would be the case, all they've accomplished is paid more in taxes. They didn't reduce their chance of winning. And here's another shocking thing. I said I was going to say a number of shocking things. It, because if you're self-employed, you have all these good tax laws, you have up to a 700% more likely chance of being selected for an audit. Even under the cutbacks at IRS, you still have a seven-time chance of being selected for an audit over that an employee. So having good tax records isn't just good. It isn't even critical. It's absolutely essential. It really is. You know, I have a current tax dilemma that I find when I've lectured throughout the country. I find that almost everyone is either not taking all the deductions they should be taking, which you're going to learn about today, uh, or, and I should say, they're not taking deductions, uh, they're taking the deductions, but they don't have the right documentation. And I find that's the case most of the time, and they're simply uh, risking themselves to tremendous amount of penalties. All right, that's why it's so important for having the right to know about taxes. Now for the meat and potatoes of the program. First of all, we're going to start off with cars, because all of you have a car and all of you take that on inspections. How would you like to get the equivalent of free gas? Would you like to? Uh, what is gas these days? So it's about two twenty a gallon, two dollars a gallon, somewhere in that range. There are two methods of taking a uh, car deduction. One is the IRS method, and the other is the actual method. The IRS is usually the more conservative approach and doesn't usually beat out the actual. So we'll start off with IRS because that's more conservative. In 2016, so I'm giving you the latest information, by the way, IRS gives you 54 cents a mile for every mile you drive for business. Last year it was 57 and a half cents a mile. So let's say tomorrow you drive 20 miles for business. IRS gives you 54 cents a mile, which is a $10.80 deduction. Now a deduction in and of itself is not cash. The cash you get from a deduction is whatever tax bracket you're in times the deduction. That's the cash that you earn. And tax, by the way, what is tax bracket? You know, we hear about it, but I'm not sure everybody knows what that means. Tax bracket is what you pay on the last dollar you make to the federal and state governments. Uh, the average American is in the 33% tax bracket. Um, you could be as high as 54%, but the average is 33. So if you multiply that by the $10.80 deduction, that results in a cash savings of $3.56 in your pocket. So, for example, if gas is two twenty-six dollars a gallon and you get 20 miles to the gallon, you're actually making $1.30 a gallon. Does everybody see that by riding off their car? That's exactly what's going on here. I want to emphasize this. And by the way, it's also the corollary. If you don't have the right documentation, if you don't have a good tax tracker, it's costing you uh, that much per gallon. You're, you're actually, it's actually costing you $3.56 a day, okay? Now, and that's the IRS method, which is the more conservative approach. And by the way, who determines what, how many miles we drive for business? Does the government or do we? And the answer is we do. And how do we do it? From a tax tracker or tax organizer. Now, let's talk about uh, the actual method. The actual method is where you take your business mileage divided by your total mileage, and that's the percentage of vehicle expenses you can write off. That's the percentage of gas, oil, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. By the way, who determines how many business miles we have, the IRS or we do? And the answer is we do. How do we do it? Again, from a tax tracker. hope everybody's getting the drift here. Okay? And by the way, the IRS method is in lieu of, both IRS and actual, is in lieu of, the IRS is in lieu of gas, oil, repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation. But you do get a certain other deductions. You can deduct sales tax to the extent you use your car for business and interest on car loans. This is available on whether they use the IRS method or the actual method. Please check your tax return to make sure your accountant gave you both things. I know someone who filed amended tax returns for three years to get back $6,000 because his accountant didn't give him that. So make sure of that. All right, what kinds of documentation do you need for your car? You know, one thing about an automobile that a lot of people don't realize is it has the number one audited area by the IRS. Number one. So it's absolutely essential that you do this right. There are four things you must have. Now, I want to emphasize there are other tax trackers out there, but they don't necessarily do it right, unfortunately. Most people don't realize that. You have to have four things. First, you have to have a beginning and ending odometer reason, uh, log. Most trackers don't have that. It's very important for the year. It doesn't have to be for each trip, just the beginning and end of year. Number two, you have to have a mileage journal for each trip you're taking. All right? Number three, you, this is something that's missed by almost every major tax tracker out there. You have to have an explanation of the business purpose for each trip. If you don't do that, you're not compliant. When I say explanation, you can say went to inspect home at 2305 Main Street 
or went to uh, do a, stru a structural analysis test or whatever. The point is you need an explanation. And number four, you need the address of each trip. Simply putting the mileage isn't enough. You must have the address. You leave out any one of these four, you're not compliant. And I'll bet you if I go into your home today to see what you did, I'll bet most of you didn't do this. I'll bet you. And as I mentioned, this is the number one audited area by the government. So having this right is very, very important. And by the way, here's a hot tip. You know, a lot of times we go to our, we go take our kids tutoring, or we go to football games, or we see our mom. Now that's normally not deductible. So there's an old saying in Washington, D.C., where I live, where there's a will, there's a lawyer. <laughs> what you do is you ask yourself, do you have a business stop you can stop at on the way to your mom? There's maybe an inspection you can do, or a meeting you can do, you go to a seminar, or something like that. By doing that, a substantial part of that trip can be deductible. By the way, your mom doesn't have to live uh, where you live. Let's say your mom lives in Hawaii, and you want to set up referral networks with other inspectors so that if any inspector comes to, uh, if, any, if, any, if you have a client from this state that, that's, that they may know about, they'll refer you to business and so on. And so there's a lot of ways to make that deductible, even though your mom lives out of state. All right, now I do want to emphasize a couple other things. The most you can write off uh, in a car or any other vehicle is $3,160 normally. Well, it was $3,160 last year. It is now, it's been retroactively improved to $11,160. That's the most you can normally write off. However, despite what you see here, this is a, a misprint on the slide. Let's see if the next slide changes this. Now, okay, let me go here. The most you can write off now if it's an SUV is and this is a qualified SUV, is $25,000. Not $11,160, but $25,000 in depreciation. Plus gas, oil, insurance, wash, wax, and so on. That's an addition in the first year. And then you could depreciate the SUV, what's left over in the second and third and sixth years. So what's a qualified SUV? A qualified SUV, number one, has to have a truck chassis. First thing. Second thing, it has to have a gross vehicle weight, which means carrying weight, of over six thousand pounds. And by the way, how would you know if you have a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds? You open up the driver's door and there's a little metal, jam, uh, a little metal plate there. In the, in the door jam, you'll see it'll say net and gross vehicle weight. You want it to have a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds. Number three, it has to have rear seating. That's the big difference between a qualified truck and a qualified SUV. A qualified SUV has rear seating. Okay? If you meet that, you can write off up to $25,000. That's kind of uh, one of the winners instead of 11160 in depreciation in the first year. Now, if you have a qualified truck or van, then you can write off the whole thing, up to $500,000. You heard me correctly. So what's a qualified truck? A qualified truck has a lot of the same rules as an SUV, over 6,000 pound gross vehicle weight. Same thing with a truck chassis. It has to have at least a six foot cargo area. But here's the one big difference between a truck and an SUV. No rear seating. You cannot have rear seating. If you have rear seating, then you come under the SUV rules and you limit it to $25,000. If you don't have any rear seating and you have at least a six-foot cargo area, you can write off 100% of the business use of that vehicle, no matter when you buy it, January or December, no matter when you buy it. So keep that in mind. The truck is the real winner here in the vans. All right, let's talk about entertainment. IRS and Internal Revenue Code allows you to write off up to 50% of your meals and entertainment for anyone who's a potential client in your business. So my question to you is who are potential clients in your business? Are your best friends potential clients? Can they give you referrals? Can they have their home inspected? Of course. How about your adult family members? Absolutely. How about your next door neighbor? Absolutely. How about speakers on webinars like me? Absolutely. I've had every one of my homes inspected. I mean, everyone is a prospect. In fact, I've never met two home inspectors and get together and not talk business. Never happens. So everyone is basically is a potential client. And if you're paying part of the bill and you're talking business and you're not writing it off, you're leaving money on that table. You're overpaying your taxes. Now, there are six elements of substantiation. I call them the five W's and an H, but altogether there's six of them. You want to make sure that you have these six written down in some kind of tax tracker or tax organizers. So what are they? Number one, who? What's their name? In this case, John Smith, Sandy Botkin. Two, what, what type of an expense was it? Was it a meal? Was it fun? Was it a golfing event? Was it, you know, went to the hockey game or football game? What, what was this? 
Number three, why? This, you have to be very specific. I asked for referrals. I talked about inspection problem. I talked about inspection report. I talked about doing an inspection. Be specific. Where? Went to Chili's or Outback Steakhouse. When? What was the date? And finally, how much? If you do this, you will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. With any Canadian, same rule, by the way. How would that feel? You will not have to worry about an audit. Now, you know, I want to emphasize something about entertainment. Uh, you know, you see a lot of big companies entertaining on the Super Bowl and on and on uh, World Cup and things like that. I think they spend what is it, a million dollars a minute. Now, small business owners don't you know don't ent uh, advertise in the Super Bowl. However, your form of advertising is when you entertain. Viral marketing is what you do when you when you market, and that's what entertaining really is. And it pays to advertise because you're promoting your business in pursuit of a profit, and two, you're offering proof that you're running your business like a business and not like a hobby, which is very, very important. So advertising and entertaining is encouraged by the Internal Revenue Code. It's the same thing as if somebody's advertising on the Super Bowl. All right, now let's talk about something else in the Internal Revenue Code. It's called associated entertainment. I bet you never heard about this from your accountant. I want you to write down the word associated entertainment. I want you to put an equal sign. Okay, this is actually in the Internal Revenue Code. And I want you to write down the word fun, fun. So we don't need better tax laws, we need better explanations of it. This is where you're going to a movie. This is where you're going to a play. This is where you're going to a ballet or you're playing golf. And you're writing off that fund, so you're having twice as much fun. <laughs> IRS says that you can write off 50% of your fund as well as 50% of your friend's fund if you pay for them. This is IRS talking, not Sandy Bodkin talking. If you talk business within the same 24-hour day as the fund. Does that give you enough time? So let's take an example. Let's say I were to go to uh, Benjamin's house and we talk business, and then an hour later we drive over to a football game and, and we watch the game. Is that talking business within the same 24-hour day? Yes, we talked business in the house and we went to the football game. Let's say that I were to go to Ben and we talk business over lunch, and I say, Ben, it's such a beautiful day here in Florida. What do you say we go play golf? And he goes, well, all right, you told me how to play, and I'll go with you. You might have a 300 handicap, but he's going. Is that talking business within the same 24-hour day? Yes. The key is you have to have something triggering you to write down the six elements of substantiation in your tax tracker or tax organizer. Otherwise, you have procrastination, and that's a real killer. You want something to trigger you to write down who, what, why, where, when, and how much. By doing that, you'll never have to worry about an IRS order. And by the way, I want to emphasize something here. Think about how good the tax laws are in this country. You are able to eat away your taxes. You can golf away your taxes. You can play away your taxes. I mean, it, you can drink away your taxes. I mean, it's, it's incredible how good the tax laws are, with no limit, by the way. Now, you know, I, I have homeowner's insurance. I'm sure you do. Why? Your house doesn't burn down every day because if you don't have it, it's a disaster. I'm sure all of you have, have car insurance. Why do you have that? You don't use it all the time because you get into an accident, you don't have car insurance, you're bankrupt. It's a disaster. Your tax tracker is your audit insurance against the government. You know, a lot of times I get asked all the time, what do I need to keep the government off my back for the rest of my life? And there's the answer, a tax tracker. That's exactly what they want. It is your audit insurance against the government. Knowledge is the premium for the policy, because you need to know what you're doing a little bit. But together, you will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. When I say know what you're doing, know about the six elements, know about the fact that, you know, you need to write these things down, what I'm giving you. Now let's talk about a home office. I'll bet you heard that if you claim a home office, you're going to get audited, and the home office is going to trigger an audit, right? I'm going to tell you something. In 1999, Congress liberalized the home office deduction for Americans. Now my question to you is very simple. Why would Congress do that if they didn't want you to take it? Okay? Secondly, I have a friend that actually did, the, did an analysis of people claiming in a home office, and they found that the people who claimed the home office had about the same chance of an audit of people who didn't claim. How's that for a surprise? So if the home office is worth thousands, which it is, and you don't take it, and you're eligible, you're crazy if you don't take it. You really are. So let me give you an example of how a home office works. Let's assume this is your floor plan of your home or your apartment, and you use one bedroom for business. And that bedroom represents, so oh, let's pick a number, one-eighth of your total square feet. There's nothing magical about this number one-eighth. I'm just picking a number. Now, what does that mean? That means that one-eighth of your home expenses now become business expenses. 
So one eighth of your utilities are now deductible as a business expense on your Schedule C. If you have a corporation, you just have re reimburse yourself for those expenses. You don't take it in the corporation, you just reimburse it. That's the way you get around that. Now, but the, I, I, but before, you couldn't deduct your utilities. But by claiming a home office, now you can. One eighth of the interest and in taxes become business interest and business taxes. You might say, well, I can write that off anyway. Yes, but not as a business expense. Normally, it's non business. Here, a portion of it can reduce your Medicare and Social Security taxes. One eighth of your house could be depreciated, and we're talking about a huge amount of money. That could be worth tens of thousands a year. A lot of times I have people asking me, Sandy, I'm renting my apartment or I'm renting a home. Can I still benefit from a home office deduction? Yes. In this example, one eighth of the rent is deductible. One eighth of the maid service, one eighth of the alarm service, one eighth of the insurance, one eighth of the repairs. I mean, it, it's just an enormous number. And all of that can be deductible. So how do we qualify for a home office deduction? I bet your accountant didn't tell you this. In fact, I bet your accountant didn't tell you about how to run off the fun with the 24-hour rule. There are three rules you've got to meet. Rule one is you've got to use an exclusive portion of a room for business. Now, how do you prove to the IRS that you use an exclusive portion of a room for business? And if you're being audited now for something you incurred two years ago, how do you prove that? The answer is you take a picture. You can do this with your iPhone, you can put it on the web, you can put it in a little file, but you want to store that picture. You want to make sure there's a date on it and a time stamp, okay? So you write down the date or time. Very important. Number two, you want to show that you use the room regularly for business. That means at least 45 minutes a day, four to five days a week. It's much more important that you use your home regularly for your business this way than, say, once every two weeks for roughly 12 hours, maybe the same amount of time but it's much more important to use it regularly. And this is where your tax tracker comes in handy, by the way. And finally, you want to use your home as your principal place of business. And this is easy. This is where you do the majority of your management, not necessarily where you render uh, your services for inspection, but where you do the majority of your management and administrative work. So if you send out your bills uh, from your home, or you study continuing education, I know internationally has all kinds of certificate courses that they have in, in development. You do that from your home, that qualifies you as a principal place of business. So if you meet all three tests, you can claim the home office deduction, which is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. And if you're not doing this, I'm telling you now, you're overpaying your taxes. Now, one question I get a lot of is, Sandy, I have a, a daughter who's going to college. Is that deductible? No. Well, I've got a son who's uh, getting married. If I help contribute to the wedding, is that deductible? No. How about room and board? Is that deductible? No. How about if I buy a car for my kids? Is that deductible? No. How would you like to get to be able to deduct the equivalent of every single thing I just said. Would you like that? All right. IRS says that you can write off your, your kids, the equivalent of your kids' college educational weddings if you do it correctly. Now, what is the correctly? College educational weddings aren't deductible. But if you hire your kids in your business and pay them a reasonable wage, are wages that you pay an assistant in business deductible? Yes. And if they use that money to pay for their own college, their own wedding, their own room and board, their own books, their own car, aren't you, in, and then use that money down the road to pay those things, aren't you getting a deduction for those things? It's the same money, but in one case, you went from non-deductible tuition to deductible wages. Now, what are some things kids can do? Lick envelopes, address envelopes. We live in Washington, D.C. or Houston, Texas, shred documents, all kinds of things. Now, number one, there are a couple of rules here. You know, if you hire me, I always couldn't care less. If you hire your kids or your family, now they care. So you've got to dot your I's and cross your T's. First of all, the rage has to be reasonable. You're not going to be able to pay your 10-year-old son $50,000 a year if they work for you three hours a week to do filing. That's not going to work. So what is a reasonable wage? A reasonable wage is what you would pay an outside agency to do the same thing. It could be a temp service or something like that. As long as you pay your kids something less, it's reasonable. You want them to keep timesheets showing what they did and when they do that. You can do this on a, on a, on a tax tracker. You can buy timesheets from Staples, from Office Depots, a lot of places to get it. Thirdly, in 2016, the first $6,300 of income tax of income that they make is income tax free. They can actually earn $6,300. Now, why is that? You know, a lot of people don't realize, but you're mailed approximately five ounces of gold every year from the government. Did you know that? It's called a standard deduction. A lot of people don't really know what to do with this thing. A standard deduction reduces earned income, like wages, by $6,300. Everybody gets it. You get it. Your kids get it. Your grandkids get it. Everybody gets it. 
So you can pay them up to $6,300 and they get that money tax-free. And that's in addition to the exemption, by the way. That's all in addition. And finally, if you're self-employed and you hire your own children who are under age 18, there's no Social Security or federal unemployment. Plan. None. To give you an idea of how valuable this is, my, uh, I've hired my kids during the summer vacations to help me out of my business and maybe work on my rental properties. All that money I paid them, this is thousands over the years, is fully tax deductible. My daughter majored in digital design, which is sort of like web design plus motion. After two years, she was able to do some internships. I, had a, I wanted to get a brand new website for my tax spot website, so I, I, my tax reduction institute website. So I, I got a quote, and it was a very expensive quote. I didn't want to get one of these freebie deals because they, they're cheap and they're garbage. So I, I went to a good firm, and it was a high quote, as I mentioned. So I asked my daughter if she could design my website for something less, which she could with all the bells and whistles. I was able to pay her something less than what the outside firm would have quoted me, but the amount I was able to pay her almost covered two years of college in-state tuition. I was able to save thousands and thousands of dollars hiring my kids. And I can tell you that if you're not doing it, you're overpaying your taxes. There's no question. All right. Uh, we have TaxBot, which will show you exactly how this works, by the way. It has a number of features to it that I'll get into. It has an automatic mileage tracking. It has, you can do it manually if you wish. It has an expense tracking. It has a tax education center. Audit safe reports that will bulletproof you against even the smartest IRS auditor and a running total of all deductions. So it has a huge number of interesting features that I'll get into. But before I do, uh, you know, a lot of times people think credit card statements are enough. I bet you do. Just think again, IRS agents love people who think this way. They really do because you need more information than the credit card provides. Remember, you, not the IRS, you are guilty until you prove you're innocent. You have to prove all your deductions were business related and that you're following the rules. Okay? And by the way, I want to emphasize something here. A lot of times people ask me, mo you know, how about QuickBooks and Quicken? You see Intuit advertising all the time. Most Intuit and, and QuickBooks and Quicken and all that other stuff are accounting systems. They're great for telling you where you spend your money, but they don't hold water when it comes to proving tax compliance. For example, there's no mileage log in Quicken. There's no um, the expense of six elements of substantiation for travel or entertainment questions are different. They don't have that stuff. A good tax tracker can replace Quicken. Quicken cannot replace a good tax tracker, I can tell you that. If you want to use it in addition, you can. You know, wouldn't it be great if you can get a personal tax assistant to do all of this for you, to keep your mileage logs for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to keep all your receipts bulletproof, so even if you have a flood, like a hurricane, Sandy, it never gets damaged, it never gets lost. And finally, to keep your tax diary for you for all the entertainment questions and travel questions and all the other things that you need for the IRS. Wouldn't that be great? Now, the problem is if you tried to hire somebody like this, it would cost you, even if you, even a minimum wage, it's got to cost you 100 150 a day. What if you can get somebody like this for pennies a day? Not pennies an hour, pennies a day. You'd be more interested in that? Of course you would. Let me introduce you to the best tax assistant you're ever going to meet. It is TaxBot. It's a cute little creature. It has a four and a half star rating in the, in the App Store. TaxBot comes with a number of very cool features, which is why Internachi partnered with, partnered with us. Number one, you can track your mileage very easily because it has an integrated GPS system with a mileage tracker. So it will automatically turn on. You don't even have to remember turning it on, which a lot of others require you to do. So let me give you an example. You can just click on uh, track your mileage, and it will automatically do it. Uh, so let me give you an example of how this works. The minute you start driving, TaxBot turns on. It will automatically do it for you. You don't have to remember. When you stop for over five minutes, TaxBot turns off, so it will save you some juice. Once it turns off, it will automatically log on the mileage. It will keep track in your phone of the beginning address. You don't write this down. It will keep track of you in your phone of your ending address. It will keep track of your date. It keeps everything that IRS requires. All you have to click on is whether it's business or personal and the vehicle. By the way, I want to emphasize something about TaxBot. It works on up to multiple businesses, several businesses, with several cars simultaneously. So you don't need a separate account if you have multiple businesses. So you can use one for you, one for your spouse, one for your kids. You can do that on one account. You don't need separate accounts. All you have to do is save it. It'll, it'll go through the web through the uh, phone, transferred by phone. And then at the, in the night, you go at night to the TaxBot. You click on the TaxBot website with your phone or, or by web. 
and you put on the explanation for why you went to that trip. Did you go for an inspection? Did you go to meet with a prospect? Set up a referral? To, you know, why? Okay, that's all you have to do. And now you are absolutely bulletproof. You will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. I promise. You'll be in great shape because your records will be perfect if you do. And that's the, the um, uh, act, that's called the uh, automatic mileage tracking. If you want to do it manually, you can turn it on and you'll get the exact same thing. When you stop, you turn it off, you get the same results. I like the automatic. I don't even have to remember turning it on. It helps a lot. In addition, TaxBot digitally stores receipts. It has an integrated expense tracker. And it works on, by the way, just so you know, it works on the iPhone, the iPad, the Droid, the Droid tablet, and the web. It works on all of those devices. So let's take an example. So really, TaxBot only has three buttons, one of which is automatic. The other button is for income, so it keeps track of your income module, and then it keeps track of your expenses. I designed TaxBot for me. You know, let me emphasize something here. I don't like ta documenting any more than you do. I do it because it saves me money, but I don't really like it. So I wanted, but one thing I've learned about myself, if it's simple, easy, and fast, I'll do it. And I think that's true for most people. So I designed it for me. I want two buttons, that's it. First button is even automatic. So let's say I'm going to have a lunch with Ben. I click on expense. The minute I click on expense, it'll give you a whole category of expenses, all of which are editable and customizable. You can even add an expense category if it's not there. One of the categories happens to be meals. So what I do is I happen to use an iPhone. I click on meals, and it shows the six elements of substantiation automatically. I just type in each meal, each, each element. That's it. And then I click on save, and everything is saved through the web. So if I lose my phone, I don't lose my data. If I replace my phone, I don't lose my data. I want to emphasize that. And as I mentioned, TaxBot works on multiple devices simultaneously. So you can, if I have an iPhone, my wife has a Droid, we both can use TaxBot on the same, uh, same company or on different companies because it works on multiple businesses. In addition to the income module, in addition to the expense tracking module, in addition to the integrated GPS with the mileage tracking, it has an integrated camera. With TaxBot, you take a picture of your receipts. IRS announced that you could, they will accept digital documentation, especially after that Hurricane Sandy. So if you take a picture of the receipt, this is an actual picture of what it looks like. You just click on, you click on the picture, make sure it's clear, and click Save. Everything is, goes on to web. You know, with TaxBot, it's, it's kind of like a BMW. There's more under the hood than it appears. Uh, it, everything is encrypted, which is unlike a lot of uh, government agencies fully backed up in multiple high security data centers in several different locations. I mean, we take data security very seriously. But in addition, you know, the whole purpose of, of any tracker is good reporting. And we have our audit safe reports where you'll be ready for even the toughest IRS audit, I promise. And the way our reports work is everything is digital, even the, even the receipts. So if you can download everything that can be downloaded by category, and you could then email the, the categories to your accountant so your tax return can be done in, in, in a very short period of time. Or you can put it on a memory disk, download it to your hard drive, or download it to a memory disk and give it to your accountant. And, and when you download it, you also get all the documentation by it. Everything is all there attached. You know, I got to tell you, you know, there are seven um, myths, seven words that causes more people to lose deductions than any single myth I can think of. And those seven words are my accountant takes care of my taxes. I equate this to, uh, with, with a doctor taking care of our body. Wouldn't it be great if we can eat all the cholesterol and fattening foods and you never have to go to a doctor? You wish you could. But accountants are essential, absolutely essential. But here's my point. If you don't have the right documentation with a tax tracker, if you don't know what you're doing, there's very little your accountant can do for you. They're limited. You know, you have to do your part. It's got to be a partnership effort. And by the way, another interesting feature of TaxBot with the technology, you can securely link your bank or credit card, and it will look, TaxBot will look for missed deductions that you didn't put in there. So if we charge something as a business expense, it will actually send you a message saying, hey, is this, you want to add this to TaxBot, so everything will be in one place. In addition to all of this, you get me. You get TaxBot's education center. We have, without question, the best education center on any expense tracker in the nation. I mean, we had one reviewer said, so you get one idea from this, you'll save thousands. We have over 40 videos on a wide variety of different tax and financial topics. We have over 370 blogs on all kinds of things, like I'm covering some of the latest scams that are going on in North America. I just 
wrote about that recently. Uh, we talk about how to asset protect yourself. Uh, how would that would that be worth to not worry about that? Worry about lawsuits. Uh, we have we have information on how to evaluate nursing homes for parents because I was looking at one for my dad. And I have a whole checklist on how to do this and how to write off all your entertainment, how to write off, how to maximize your car deduction, and much much more. I mean, we have just a tremendous library. And also in the front of TaxBot, it will show you in real time how much you are saving. I mean, I mean, it, it's just enormous that the the benefits that are coming in here. They can put thousands and thousands of dollars of deductions in your pocket. You know, before I developed TaxBot, I used to look like this on the left. We had big spreadsheets. It was just horrible. Now, in a minute and a half a day, I, in fact, we guarantee it, in a minute and a half a day or less, I promise you'll look like this on the left. It's that easy. Our customers love TaxBot. We got an 8.63 out of 10 in the reviews. We have a 4.5 star rating. We've been recommended by almost every real estate association across the country. We're recommended by the National Society of Accountants for their clients. There's a reason. We're very easy to use and simple. We're recommended by New York Stock Exchange, direct, uh, you know, direct selling companies. Now, the way tax file works, we made it risk-free. We have a 100% risk-free guarantee. You sign up for a 14-day free trial. You don't pay a dime. That's it. And if you, if you want it, you then pay $9.99 a month for all of this. Or if you want to save money, you save even two months, you go, to, you go for the year for $99.99 a year. And by the way, it doesn't even cost $9.99 a month. Why not? Because it's tax deductible. So it only costs you about $5.40 a month after taxes. What's that, about 18 cents a day? I said it was pennies a day for all of this. The way you get it is you go to www.nachi, N-A-C-H-I, taxpot.com that's www.nachi.taxpot.com hopefully I've convinced you of the horrible mistake of overpaying your taxes and I certainly apologize to anyone who doesn't get this I don't know why you wouldn't with a 14-day guarantee like this but it, you know for whatever reason uh, you, you don't you, you don't have, you don't have to use it you don't have to get charged it's that simple so go to www.nachi.taxpot.com and by the way uh, you will also, if for those of you who sign up within the next 24 hours, Nachi has negotiated a special premium for you. You will get our premium service, which you get to call and ask, and we charge over $259 for this, by the way. You get to call and ask unlimited tax questions with tax professionals. They will review your last year's business tax return for ways to save in the future. In addition to that, and all professional services are backed by a $1 million service policy. So you get all of this for only $9.99 a month, which is fully tax deductible, or $99.99 a year. I, mean, I don't know why you wouldn't do this. Those of you who want something simple, easy, and fast, this is about as simple as it gets. The bottom line is do something. If you want to get another expense tracker and get a fireproof safe, hey, go for it. But do something. By the way, if you still have tax questions, you will get our 10 free reports that will show you how to drive your car virtually free in a lot more detail, save on medical with a, with a self-insured medical plan. You'll like that, how to show your medical into business, uh, deduct meals and entertainment, hire your kids in various ways, using the gift leaseback technique. You'll see, get the number one strategy by financial planners in the country, save on travel, and much, much more. So again, sign up for a 14-day free trial. In fact, we have a guarantee. You will get 20 times what you pay to new deductions or just don't don't pay for don't pay for it. It's that simple. We're guaranteeing 20 times of what you paid in one month. Okay, that's a pretty risk-free deal. Let's go to www.nachi.taxbot.com. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back to either Dave or to Benjamin, so you can read me the questions that you ask. Again, if you want to enroll, it's www.nachi.taxbot.com. Okay, guys, why don't you take take it over? Okay. Thanks, Sandy. Um, we do have a couple questions uh, that I, they'd like to have answered. Um, also, if you guys have any more questions, uh, type them into the chat box right now, and we'll get to those, as, as, as many of those as we possibly can. Um, first one we have is asking, I guess they have an assistant that they work with uh, that also incurs expenses, and they're wondering the best way that they can both use TaxBot for the one company, and is that possible? The answer is absolutely. Remember I said TaxBot works on different devices simultaneously, and you can use it with several people or several businesses, multiple businesses or multiple people on the same account. So if you want to use it with your assistant, you can. You get one report, they get the other report. The key is each person has to put in what entity they're using. So it can work with the assistant. 
But be advised, if they're on the same account, they can see everything you're spending. So be advised of that. Okay? Okay, great. Um, also a question about uh, taking pictures of receipts. Once they take that picture, is it okay to throw that receipt away? Yes, you can throw away the receipt. IRS allows digital documentation. But you want to make sure you have a clear picture so everything is, is you can viewable, you can see the date on it, you can see the amount and all that. Okay, great. All right, this is a question about uh, their clothing. Uh, he says, rules on deducting clothing, they get dirty while doing inspections. Uh, do they have to be official uniforms, or can they be his regular work clothes, and can he deduct right. the cost Good of Good point. That's an excellent question. Generally, the clothing that you wear on the street that wouldn't identify you as a home inspector is not deductible. I don't care if you got it dirty while you were doing the inspection, which I do understand happens, not deductible. Is there any way to deduct clothing? Yes. IRS allows you to deduct dry cleaning and the purchase of costumes. Costumes are things that, you, you think of a costume, you think of somebody like Obrachi, but no. Costumes are things that identify who you are, like a medical smile. If you have a special costume with a um, logo of your firm and it's on the front of your outfit, of your, let's say your, of your jacket or on your shirt, then that shirt or jacket would be deductible and the dry cleaning of that shirt and jacket would be deductible. So if it's a costume, a qualified costume, then yes, it would be a deductible, and so would the dry cleaning. Okay, great. Um, I think you did mention this uh, during your webinar, but they were asking about the most audited uh, category for the IRS. Oh, there's no question. The number one most audited category of IRS is automobile. That's number one. No question about it. It's more than any by anything. Home office, I don't know, maybe entertainment is second, and home office is third. That's why we covered it in such detail on this webinar. Okay. I'm sure they're doing a lot of driving out there, going to all the different houses and whatnot. Um, all right. Question about a cell phone. Um, like a lot of us, I think he's using this both for business and for personal use. And how does, how does he go about deducting that cell phone and its use? Okay. By the way, I do want to mention the automatic mileage tracking is particularly good for the inspectors because this way they don't have to remember to turn it on. It automatically go on by itself and turn off by itself. Uh, cell phones are normally deductible. So if you buy a new cell phone, you can write it off. Okay? Now, the cell phone bill depends on how you operate your business. If you operate your business as a corporation, your corporation pays the bill, you can write off the cell phone bill. If you operate as a self-employed individual, then what you need to do is keep some kind of record. The IRS doesn't tell you what kind. They'll accept any reasonable approach to writing off the bill. So if you can make an estimate as to what part of that is business, uh, it's best if you can keep your bill and check off what's business, what's personal. But there's a recent tax court case that just simply says a reasonable estimate of what's business will be allowed. So you can make a reasonable estimate on what part of that bill is business, and maybe you can show it by one bill or two bills to show that that matches the estimate. I think you can write off your monthly cell phone bill. Okay, great. All right, this is a question about expanding uh, the business. Uh, Jess is wondering, are any part of loans for expanding his business tax deductible? Uh, generally, expanding a business is tax deductible. There's a certain rule that if it's qualified for a new trade of business, you have to capitalize it. Uh, if it's expanding an existing trade of business, then it's normally tax deductible. I would see your accountant about this to make sure that you're in that second category, uh, but generally the rule is you can write it off. Okay, great. Um, okay, uh, asking about the home office, office deduction, uh, it was their understanding that they needed a separate entrance for the room or office to qualify as a home office. Uh, can you share your thoughts on that? You know, I heard, I've had a number of people say that to me. Uh, I'm not quite sure what business they're in. Maybe they need to escape quickly. I don't know. Uh, there is no rule in the Internal Revenue Code that says you must have a separate entrance. So I don't know where that came from, but I, that, is, that is not in the tax law. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I'm just going to read it as he has it, see if we can uh, figure out what, he, what his intents are. It says, are rules for mileage deduction applicable to mileage deduction and actual expenses deduction, the actual expenses method? Yes. You need to keep a mileage log so you know what part of your expenses are deductible. I mean, if you incur, a fat, let's say, $2,000 in gasoline, you can't write off $2,000 unless you have a mileage log showing what percentage of that is business. And the same thing is true with the IRS method. Not all your mileage is 54 cents a mile. It's your business mileage that you can write off 54 cents a mile. Okay, great. All right, we've got some good ones coming in. Uh, this person just, just started their inspection business last year, and the inspections were kind of slow for the first year. Uh, more going out than coming in. 
Uh, he has an Excel spreadsheet he's using right now. Is he okay for this year and using TaxBot from now on? Yes. Let me. Let me. I want to emphasize that we, uh, we didn't. I don't know why we don't have a slide on this, David. We need to add this slide. Uh, remember, I said the government is the biggest bookie in North America, and we have some good tax laws in this country. Let me just share with you something that I didn't put it in the webinar, and I'm going to add this. I'm so glad you asked that question. If you start your business and your business has a loss, that law, the government subsidizes you with that loss in three ways. Number one, you can use that loss against any form of income you have. Interest, dividends, wages, pensions, rents, anything. So let's take an example. Let's say your spouse makes $50,000 a year in a job and you have a $10,000 loss in the first year in your inspection business. You only pay taxes on the net, which is $40,000. That's one way. The second way is let's say your loss exceeds your income for the year, or you didn't have any income for the year. You get to carry back all business losses two years and actually get a refund from the federal and in many cases state government for the last two years of taxes that you pay. You actually get a check. And if let's say that loss exceeds all your income that you paid for the last two years, it wipes out all your taxes that you paid, you then, number three, get to carry forward all business losses up to 20 years and offset the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction. And even if you're, even, and by the way, the amount of income you make, I want you to notice, is immaterial. Because if you have a loss, you can carry it back, carry it forward. It doesn't matter what income you make. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. This person uh, was wondering if they could use a partial room as, as a home office or if the entire room has to be used as a home office. That's an excellent question. IRS will accept a partial room as long as, this is what it says in the regulations, there's a separate identifiable area as to what is where the business is conducted. So you have to be clear and separate and identifiable right? and not commingle with anything personal. It has to be clear what part of the room is business and what isn't. As long as you do that, you're okay and take a picture. Okay. This is an interesting one. I don't know that we've ever had this one before. It says, I have a virtual office um, in another state. Uh, the city wants 1% of my income for doing business there. I have this office for this specific purpose uh, for Google, uh, Internet SEO, search engine optimization and stuff. And I get mail there. I do 98% of my business in Illinois in my home office. Would I still be seen as doing business? Uh, in Missouri due to the right. fact that I have a virtual mail pickup and address there. All right, I'm going to give you what I think. The answer is yes. Yes, I don't see any reason. I mean, can't you write off more than one office? A lot of companies have multiple offices. I don't see why you can't write off yours. Okay. Um, how about costs related to registering and hosting a website? Uh, that should be, well, that should be fully tax deductible if it's to register your um, inspection business, yes, or any business for that matter. Okay, we've got three more, and then I think that'll probably wrap us up for uh, for the day here. So, uh, this one for my wife and I, I need to buy one. Do I need to buy one subscription, or do I need to buy two? Good point. You only need one subscription. Remember, I said that TaxBot works on multiple businesses, multiple cars simultaneously. So you can use one. You can use one business. It will call you. One business say your wife, and you can do it simultaneously. The key is that there's a place called Entity. You want to make sure that you're logging expenses under the correct entity and not under the wrong entity. But other than that, it's a drop down. Other than that, you can use it on multiple businesses, multiple cars. In this case, one for you and one for your wife with the same account. You don't need multiple accounts. It just saves you $9.95 a month. Okay. Um, this person has been using the standard mileage deduction and they were wondering if they could switch to actual expenses. Uh, yes. You can always go from IRS to actual. Always. Going from actual to IRS isn't that easy. You have to get a new car in business to go back. But from IRS to actual is always allowable with no problem. Okay. And last question here. Um, they're wondering if tax bot is deductible. 100%. Everything we do is deductible. <laughs> I'm like a walking tax deduction. So, yes, tax bot is fully tax deductible. All right. Okay, that's it for questions. Uh, Sandy, why don't you say some closing remarks, and then I know that Ben wants to uh, to close the call, so turn the time well, back over to him. You know, the bottom line, folks, is you know you want to keep the IRS off your back. You want them not have to worry about an audit. This is the way to do it. If you want something simple, easy, and fast, it doesn't get easier than tax bot, and better for that matter. It really doesn't. Uh, you, especially with the guarantee, the unconditional 2,000% guaranteed rate of return. You, if, you, if you want to do something different, get a fireproof safe, try another expense tracker, hey, go for it. But do something. 
Don't just sit there and do nothing. That's my, my, my bottom line. And by doing that, I promise it will make your life a lot less taxing. Okay, turn it back to Benjamin. Well, thank you, Sandy. It is always enjoyable when you come to our webinars. Um, you make everything very simple. That's what I really enjoy. And everyone um, attending, I'll be sending a recording of the video, like we said before. And thank you for um, thank you to everyone at staff on TaxBot. Thank you, Dave, Sandy, and everyone who's attending. See you later. Bye, everybody.